Taiwo3 community and welcome back to our Taiwo3 YouTube channel. My name is Björn and today I want to talk about the great flexibility of the Taiwo3 form framework. Relax, there is no coding, coding involved at all. We will do great stuff just by adding some configuration and some fluid templates. So the other day, Lars raised an inter interesting question on our Slack channel, which is XForm, by the way. So he asked, I want to add a checkbox to my form, and that che checkbox should have a label that contains a link to another page. So for instance, such a page could be a uh, privacy policy page or a page about your terms and conditions. Um, basically, Lars is right. This is quite a common use case. So let's check what the form framework has to offer right now. So I will switch, uh, switch to my Typo3 installation and open the forms module. And um, I've created already a contact us form. And there is a checkbox um, form element already. As you can see, the inspector shows you that we've got a label, a field for the description, but we can as a smart guy, I would try to enter some HTML. Let's see what happens. So, and let's save the form. And you will see our form framework just stripped off all the HTML. So this is no solution at all. Yeah, in conclusion, uh, the form framework itself does not ship a ready-to-use solution. But wouldn't it be sweet if we could extend the inspector to enable the user to add all the information needed? So um, I've just created a small mock-up. And oh, I can extend it. So I've just created a small mock-up to show what I'm talking about. So uh, besides all the labels we've already got, the, um, the fields we've already got, for the label and the description, I want to have another field for the link text and a field for um, the page target or the link target, which com comes with a handy link wizard to you know, ease the life of the editor, the user. In order to keep this tutorial um, as easy as possible, I decided to put all my configuration into my existing site package. So if you want to reuse your code, I recommend just creating uh, a small, ex uh, small extension and put all the code in there. Um, by the way, there are other plenty of other solutions, no question. But um, so I've heard people saying that they they solved the issue by putting um, some JavaScript um, code into their site package and try to override the checkbox uh, and try to override you know the label or other people created a new checkbox template and added a static text to the template. But those solutions have <laughs> some drawbacks, I would say. Um, on the one hand, the editor cannot change the link at all. And think about real URL. Um, if one moves the page to a different place, then real URL will generate uh, a new path. So the link will break, for sure and it will take some time till you realize uh, what's just going on and th your solution will not work anymore. So that's not a good uh, idea at all. So now let's start the real coding. Um, to give you an overview about uh, what we have to do, here are like the three steps. So step one, we have to register some uh, YAML configuration for the front and back end. Step two is we have to register a new form element, and we have to extend the inspector on the right, and we have to take care of the front end. So yeah, let's dive into all the coding and customization. Um, as said, I've created a site package. This is nothing fancy, nothing special. You already know how to do this. So as you can see, I have, I have created a page object, including some bootstra Twitter bootstrap, JavaScript, and CSS stuff, and created a uh, navigation. So in the front end, so in the front end, it basic basically looks like this. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing special. So now let's register the YAML configuration files for the front end backend. 
um, yeah, I've prepared some uh, code for you that we will save some time not seeing me typing. And like I will add my um, YAML configuration for the front end right in my static typo script template. It's nothing fancy. It's just telling the form framework to register a new form, uh, a new YAML configuration. And as a key, I'm using a Unix timestamp. But this is totally up to you. You could also use something like 100. But just keep in mind to not use 10 or 20, because this is reserved for the form framework itself. So as you can see, I'm registering a new YAML file over here. And this is maybe somehow strange. Um, we have to do the same for the back end. I've also prepared a, prepared a small file for this. Um, basically, I'm adding a X TypoScript setup file to the root of my site package. It is, it has, um, it's not very different from the code I've recently added for the front end. The only difference is in the front end you're writing plugin and in the back end you're just setting it or changing it to module. The rest is like totally the same. Um, why do we need this? Basically, it's all about the front end preview in the back end. So to show you what I'm talking about is, um, as you know, in the uh, form editor, you have this abstract view, but also you have the possibility to preview your form. And over here, it's a real front end preview. And that means the front end templates are loaded. So, yeah, you might wonder, mm, this is kind of, yeah, not so cool, but um, just uh, as a side note, uh, we want to streamline this process in version 9. So with the upcoming version, um, you will only need to register the YAML configuration once in a central place. So right now, but you know, for version 8, we have to do it like this. There's no way around this. Let's add the uh, um, YAML configuration to our site package. So just put it um, inside site package configuration. And as you can see, this file is right now, it's, it's empty. No information there yet. OK, so we've prepared everything we have to do. And now we can really get started with the real configuration. Um, I want to register a new form element. And I will call it link checkbox. Um, the new form element is basically a checkbox. So we can um, inherit the code. Um, we can inherit all the configuration from the already existing checkbox element. So have a look at the code. I'm defining a new form element called link checkbox, and I'm using the powerful almighty inheritances feature. This allows us to inherit all the configuration from one existing, um, let's say, form element. And this line does it all, uh, actually. So we are inheriting all the configuration from the checkbox element. That's pretty neat. Um, in addition, we have to tell the form editor where to show at which position the new element, and we have to define um, the name of the new element. Um, furthermore, I'm telling the form editor which backend template it has to use. So this is nothing special. There are a couple of um, yeah, backend templates available. Just have a look and yeah, be creative. Um, and there's another very strange thing. These, these uh, three lines could be Somehow, I do not understand what it means, and it's uh, so you could say it, I do not understand what it means, and it's kind of uh, tricky. It's another thing we want to get rid of in version 9, but in version 8, yeah, you ha just have to do it. There has to be this file, or basically, we have to load another special JavaScript module via require.js, and that's the configuration for it. So I do not want to stress this point um, too much because, you know, as I sa already said, we want to get rid of this kind of mapping. Um, 
I'm just opening the code for you and just copy paste it and there's just one line you have to change. Change. It kind of sucks, but yeah, it will be gone soon. So yeah, now let's let's save our code so far and clear the caches and reload our form and create a new element. Eventually, yay, there's our new linked checkbox element. So edit to um, our form. And right now, as you can see, there's no difference at all between both of the two checkbox elements. And this is like the next step we have to undertake. So let's add some conf configuration to the new linked checkbox element. Um, basically, I will not explain each and every line of this uh, configuration, but um, some of the parts are quite important. So maybe this is easy to understand. Um, I'm just adding a new field to my inspector um, with a sort order of at position 400. Um, it's of a it's a it's called or the label will be link text, and the internal identifier is link text. This is quite interesting that. Um, we, we have different inspectors um, within the form framework. You will uh, see another inspector over here. So there are a couple of great inspectors. This is like the easiest one, the normal one, just an input field. But you could also have checkboxes or selectors, select fields, or um, link wizard, wiz wizards or something like that. And you can add validators to your um, form editor. Uh, so let's just uh, save it and go back to our form editor um, and reload the form. And now you can see we've got like two new fields. We've added two new fields to our inspector. This one is pretty obvious. I can add a link text and I can add a or select a page. Great. So basically, this is all we have to do in the back end. We can, in addition, um, make this field like required because, yeah, terms and conditions should be like required information. And now we can take care of the front end, and this is nothing special anymore. It's quite easy. So, first of all, we have to tell the form framework where it has to look for additional templates. So Basically, I'm telling the form framework, hey, buddy, um, within this path, there's another, there could be uh, more ad or additional templates. And I'm adding the additional template to my resources. So let's save our configuration, clear the caches again, and let's check out the front end. So we've got the new. Uh, link checkbox element, and it has a, um, a link text linked to a page. That's basically it. I hope you enjoyed my short tutorial. If you have any further questions, le please leave a comment below, or um, just um, check out our XForm Slack channel, leave a message over there, and please do not forget to subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs>